Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham. We're back in X-Plane 10 Airborne with the DC-9. This is part two of the video series. We're going to continue the flight. We started off in Rome Fumicino. We're now about uh, 60 miles away from Toulouse in southern France and routing on towards uh, Tarbes. We can see the Pyrenees just appearing out of the uh, sunset here. So not much has changed really since uh, part one of the video. We're still cruising along at 32,000 feet, uh, speed around Mach decimal 75, and uh, we've got Toulouse as the waypoint, 55 miles ahead, and uh, everything else is pretty much as you saw it before. We're at the point where we need to consider planning the descent. Most importantly, we've got to establish where we're going to start the descent. Uh, there's no flight management system, there's no TV screens that show us a lovely top of descent arrow, so we have to work it out the old-fashioned way. We're routing towards Toulouse uh, VOR. From Toulouse we're going to go on to the uh, Tarb VOR. And I know from the approach charts that 4,000 feet at Tarb would be appropriate. Also, I know from the uh, Sky Vector navlog I've printed off that there's 55 miles between uh, Tarb and Toulouse VOR. So I'm at 32,000 feet. I want to be down at 4,000 feet. That's 28,000 feet to lose. Three times uh, 28. That's uh, let me see. Three times 20 is 60. Three times 8 is 24. That takes us to 84 miles to lose. Add on 10 miles for a little bit of margin. That takes us to 94. Do you know what? Let's call it 95. So I need 95 miles total for the on route descent. 95 miles total on route means. Uh, with 55 miles between Toulouse and Tarb, that's 40 before Toulouse, so just about 6 miles to top descent. That all makes sense, we'll keep an eye on it as we go. We need to set some bugs as well. So weights wise, it's uh, just going to be 39.5, we'll probably lose half a tonne between there. The difference between 40 and 39 is not worth worrying about. I'm going to bug 128, which is the uh, flap 40 threshold speed. There's a uh, threshold speed 128. My uh, clean speed 185, that is bugged as well. And last thing, slap retraction 162. That's just in the case of a missed approach. 162. There's 40 miles before, so what I'll do is I'll click it into IS hold, make sure the target is set down. We'll go all the way down to 4 initially. And I'll bring the thrust off. That's 4,000 feet. So IS hold, it'll maintain 270 knots and uh, descending with idle thrust. Need to make sure the cabin descends as well, that's one thing I forgot. So let's wind the cabin down to field elevation. Field elevation is going to be. It's about uh, 1,200, isn't it? Let's have a look. 1,260, I think. So it should be around about there. I want to set the cabin altitude to 1,260. I should do it. And let's just monitor the descent. So still tracking towards Toulouse. Tarb is uh, up here, 13.9. And while we're talking, we've got an ident and a DME from it. Let's just double check the ident. Yeah, that's TARB. Perfect. So if we wanted to, and air traffic were happy, we could route direct to TARB. Let's just leave it uh, tracking to Toulouse at the moment. Obviously we need to be aware how much uh, track distance we're going to lose if we go direct to TARB. I'll have a think about that in, uh, well, there's 29,000 feet. I've got 25,000 feet to lose. 3 times 25 is 75, so we could in fact go direct to TARB at this point. So you know what? Why don't we do that? Let's click out of Navlock just now. It's back into turn knob. Ochin Tarb, 13.9. Uh, uh, 13.9. Just identify on the number one as well. And whilst it's doing that, I'll find an appropriate radio, radio to fly direct. That's good. Back into Nav. And the aircraft should make an effort to fly direct to Tarb, which is perfect. 
So there's no ground speed indication on this aircraft. All that we have is uh, a continuous check against the uh, distance to run and the altitude to lose. We've set the airspeed bugs. We should set some uh, bugs on the altimeter as well. There's a yellow bug and a white bug. Let's use the uh, yellow bug for the minimums. I'm going to use Cat 1 uh, and it's going to be 1850 feet barrel. And I'll set the field elevation as well at 1260 just as a reminder. I'll also tune the uh, ILS on box 2 now as the uh, main uh, nav radio is navigating towards TARB. So 109.5 and course 201. One of the really useful things about this aircraft, as I mentioned in the uh, first video, it doesn't use a plug-in for the systems, it's all X-Plane default systems. One of the good things about that is the situation saving works almost perfectly. There's only a few things like the uh, bugs and the uh, cards that are displayed on here that don't uh, translate over to a save situation. So if you want to uh, save it, reload the situation and have another, have another go at a procedure, then it's dead easy to do that on this aircraft. So 24,000 feet, that's 20,000 feet to lose, that would be 60 miles, I've got 69 to run, so my 10 mile margin is still intact. What that tells me is the descent rate is appropriate at the moment. If that margin was being reduced, uh, I'd probably need to increase the uh, airspeed to get the sink rate to increase. If the margin was increasing, then I'd be going down a little bit too quickly. So we're just monitoring the progress as we go. Again, it's a little bit more involved in doing it with the uh, Magic FMS box, but once you've done it a few times, it's reasonably straightforward and hopefully self-explanatory. If you have trouble with it, I've done a video called uh, Ground School uh, for Descent Planning, and also there's a video on the IXAG model uh, that shows it going into uh, Barcelona, I believe. One of the great things about the DC-9 is the flat mounting speeds. It's really ridiculously high. We can put the gear down at 300 knots and use most of the flaps at uh, 280, 240, 210. Really very high flat mounting speeds. What we do is uh, look at this card here because this gives us the maneuvering speed and the threshold speed. Okay, so let's say uh, I'm going to do a flat 40 landing. My threshold speed is 128. I'll not go uh, all the way down to the threshold speed. I'll fly 10 knots faster than that until short final. That's going to be 138. So I'll just fly 10 knots faster than the bug here. But theoretically, I could go all the way down to 185 with the aircraft clean. However, the problem with doing that is, um, one, you, your figures change based on the weights. I'm planning to land at 39 tonnes. And two, in the real aircraft, you'd have somebody sitting next to you that could call out those speeds for you. What I've decided to do instead is use a more simplistic approach for the purposes of the sim. I know that even at the maximum weight of the aircraft, I can go down to 210 knots with the aircraft clean. So 210 will be my minimum clean. 190 with only the slats out. 180 with flap 5 and 160 with flap 15. That's entirely conventional and straightforward, very similar to the 737 models. And most importantly, it will take you down to 160 knots, which is really the more or less standard speed to fly a final approach at on an ILS these days. From 160 knots, flap 15, the next stage will be the uh, gear. Flap 25, and then I'll come back to 20 knots above the bug speed. So 128, 138, 148. That's only a transient stage. Then we'll go to flap per 40 for the landing. Again, it's very similar to the uh, procedures on the 737. Once we get the gear down, we'll arm the uh, spoilers. And also we'll put the... Um, we'll put the uh, engine ignition on uh, once we have the flap. So just notice that as I reloaded the uh, scenario here, it didn't set the uh, no smoking signs. That's the one thing I missed when I checked it. Of absolutely no consequence whatsoever for us. So how's the descent going? 
17,000 feet. That means we've got 13,000 feet to lose. 13, 26, 39, and we've got 49. So this idle descent, 3 miles per thousand uh, feet. It's working out perfectly. I've got a little bit of margin at the moment, that 10 miles. I'm going to use some of it to slow down to 250 knots, and the rest of it to slow down to the final approach speed. When I get to uh, the TARB VOR, I'm going to track outbound on 257. That is almost exactly the track we're on at the moment, so I'll just make the heading bug roughly 257. In fact, it's, it's almost there. It's only about 3 miles until we pick up the ILS. We're going to go down to an ILS platform of 4,000 feet. Uh, sorry, 3,000 feet of the ILS, 4,000 at uh, at the VOR. So I'll put 3000 in the alert just now. Passing through 15,000 feet, probably a good time to put the seat belts on, get everybody sat down, make sure everybody in the toilet gets back into their seats in time for the landing. So if you've been watching the uh, videos, you'll notice there's been quite a gap between the uh, videos from the uh, the previous videos uh, I've done. Uh, it's been quite difficult to record videos recently. Um, by way of an explanation for that, is I have to wait until everybody else in the house has gone to bed before recording the videos. Uh, my computer's in the uh, uh, in a family area of the house, so it's you know not easy to record videos when uh, kids and dogs are around. So it's currently about 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, obviously I've got to wait until days off before doing that. When I'm working I tend to do a lot of um, early flights. I tend to get up about uh, 3 4 o'clock in the morning and drive into work and then go to bed quite early on in the evening uh, to get ready for that. So recording the videos it has to really correspond to time when I've got uh, a reasonable amount of time off work. And uh, to be honest the winter, uh, coming out of the winter into uh, spring it's been a lot busier than perhaps it was uh, last year. That's a good thing uh, for employment and salaries and everything else, but maybe not such a great thing for flights and videos. But we've got to find balance, you see. I'll do the very best I can to get uh, ahead, and I'm really enjoying flying this uh, DC-9. It's quite easy to make videos with a DC-9 because there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. I was part way through a series with the uh, TU-154, uh, looking through the systems. Um, I've still got some notes uh, to finish off that video series, but I found it quite hard going, especially the, uh, the system stuff specifically, because there's a lot of research for not very much content. It's uh, 12,000 feet, that means I've got 8,000 feet to lose. 8, 16, 24. I've got 35, so I'm actually descending at a slightly faster rate than I need to do. I'll just put a little bit of power on and try and keep that margin to be 10 miles or so. So I, I really enjoyed doing the uh, Tupolev video series. Um, that didn't really translate into video views, it kind of making content that people weren't overly keen on watching. There was a dedicated uh, hardcore of uh, Tupolev fans, but uh, certainly nowhere near the hits or the, uh, the, the views that you'd see on the 737 model. But that being said, Personally, I enjoy doing the videos, so when I get a chance, I'll, I'll try and complete the uh, system series and then look at some of the other stuff. As we pass through 10,000 feet of flight level 100, uh, we've got uh, another 6,000 feet to lose. 6, 12, 18 miles, so I'd expect to have 28. What I'll do is go into vertical speed and bring the power off, reduce the vertical speed a little bit and passing below 100 we're looking for 250 knots so I'll just use the, the opportunity to slow down a little bit as that's coming back make sure the pressurisation is going the right way, the cabin arch is descending that makes sense uh, We've already stuck the seatbelt signs on, and once the speed's back, I'll put the uh, wing lights on for below 100. The wing lights are very like the uh, A320 series that uh, they're out on the tips here, the A320, they're fitted at the wing roots, but 
the protruded down into the airflow. They're not flush mounted like they are on the Boeings. So uh, I don't know whether you would uh, have a speed restriction on the lights on the DC-9. You almost certainly would have. Um, I, I don't really know the uh, prototypical information for that. So if you know about uh, how they would use the landing lights, what sort of SOPs they would use, please let me know in the comment section. Just 250 knots or a little bit less, so I'll click it into IS hold now and it should uh, continue the descent. Descend about uh, 230. That's fine, gives us some time to think on the approach. Obviously we try and fly standard speeds or speeds that uh, air traffic want, but it's very common in uh, backwater airfields like this to uh, have a, a kind of free speed situation. You can do the speed you want, as long as you tell air traffic what you're doing. Coming up on 9,000 feet, that's 5,000 feet to lose and 15 miles to go. I've got 23, so I've used two of my 10 mile margin to slow down. That's pretty good, so I'll probably use uh, a little bit more power now, just keep it a bit higher for longer. So I mentioned that uh, the flap speed limits are very generous on the DC-9. That's one of the things that makes it quite easy to fly, that you know you can do visual arrivals. You've got a lot of drag available, should you need it. And I've come up with this uh, speed schedule just to make life a little bit easier for me. If you only fly the DC-9 in the sim, then, you know, learn the speeds. Have the speed card, maybe print these off rather than have them on the, uh, the simulated joke here. And then you've got them much more obviously uh, available to you. I did find some speeds on a, a DC-9 website, but a uh, slightly different version, the speeds didn't really match up. So for the video series, we we'll use the speeds on the card here. 4,000 feet to lose. 12 miles, we've got 19. So we're eroding some of the margin, but that's on purpose. We've got the speed nicely back. Hoping at some point we'll get an ident from the ILS 109.5. Just double check the chart. Yeah, 109, uh, 1095. It should ident as Oscar Sierra, and of course is 201. We've got on there. Approaching 7,000 feet, 3,000 feet to lose, 9 miles required, and we've got uh, about 14. So we've got a 5 mile margin now. I want to be uh, probably around 180 knots or so. Uh, as I get uh, over tarp heading outbound, that'll be uh, flap 5 required, although flap 15 could be used as well. So I'll use the last uh, 10 miles running towards tarp. What we'll do is we'll click it into vertical speed. And then I'll bring the thrust back. I'm about to select some flaps as well, so what I'll do is, I don't know if it's required on the DC-9, but we'll put the engine ignition on as well. X-Plane's very restrictive with the range you can hear the uh, ILS is from. It would be normal to hear it a little bit further out than that. What I'll do is I'll put the aircraft into uh, heading select just now and we'll leave it in that mode. You can turn the uh, course pointer around to uh, 201 just to get it ready for the ILS. But I'll fly the aircraft on the RMI pointer here. There's a DME from the ILS so that's looking good. Hopefully we'll get an ident any moment. So I said 210 was my minimum clean speed. Below 220. Uh, slap, slap limiting speed is what, 300 or something? It's pretty fast, so not an issue at all. We'll take the slats. So expecting the blue light up here for the slats. There we go. Slats uh, produce very little drag. There's Oscar Sierra, that's what we expect. 
Seven miles to go uh, to Tarb. I've got 1,000 feet to lose and the speed is washing back. Sink rate looks appropriate at the moment. We could even reduce that just a little bit. What I don't want to do is go from flying a nice profile further back in the descent uh, to really being quite tight on the approach at this point. Just make sure we fly up bound over the beacon. So remember with slats, uh, my schedule speed is 190. I can go back to 190. I really want to come back to 180. So I'll take flaps 5 as well. Verify that we've uh, got obviously the light selected belts on and ignitions on. So flap 5 and uh, speed 180. DC9 is very slippery. Uh, as it's simulated, so I need flat 15 to fly a 3 degree slope. So everything's going to happen together, so we're just approaching 4,000 feet, which is what we wanted at the beacon. The ILS platform and the minimum safe from here is uh, 3,000. 3,000 is what we've got in the alerter window, and speed's coming back. It's below 190 for the procedure. You can see we're going over the beacon at the moment, so I'll transfer onto the uh, ILS 1095. We'll ident that quickly. Oscar Sierra. I'll click the system into the ILS mode. I've got a glide slope here as well. I want to make sure I don't go below that 3,000 feet until we're fully uh, well, until we're on the glide slope now. So just being aware that it won't capture 3,000 that I have to capture by myself. Here's speed 180. I want to do 160 down the slope. We're only 10 miles out. So I'll take flat 15. That's good down to 160 by my schedule and actually down to 142 if we wanted to use the actual weights. Quite a tight uh, turn we've got going on at the moment here. So we're going to do a what, 60 degree intercept. Where's the runway? We could maybe help it out a little bit and start a, a gentle turn just to help it capture. Make sure it's still in the ILS mode. So it's turning on the localizer. That's perfect. It's telling me I've got a couple hundred feet to go. I'll set the initial missed approach. That's 2,000 feet above the field, flap 15. What I do is I'll put the gear down and select flaps 25. I can go down to 20 knots off the bug speed now. That's going to be 148, which is where we are. I'll just bring the vertical speed right down, 100 feet to go. I can see the glide slopes coming down and we're in visual conditions. So we're going to have a very, uh, very small level segment. A little bit of power coming on there. So speed brakes are armed and we'll put the nose light on as well. There you go, we've got glide slope capture. So gears down three greens, slats, flap 25, final stage is 1500 feet above the field, we'll take flap 40 and come back to uh, threshold speed plus 10. There you go, flap 40 and uh, just looking for about uh, 138. So 
we'll put 4000 back for the missed approach altitude. And that's us ready to go. Coming up to 1000 above the field, still about uh, 1200 radial. The terrain obviously uh, rises towards the airfield. But the approach is stable, we're on the slope, on the sense line. Speed's good, config's good, everything's uh, ready to go. 1,000 feet radio. I'll take the autopilot out. Caution. There's no auto brakes uh, on this aircraft. We'll use the reversers when we've touched down and the spoilers uh, will deploy by themselves. There's no 3D scenery at this airport, there's just a uh, taxiway. So what we'll do is we'll uh, taxi off, find a convenient point and uh, stop the aircraft. Still maintaining that threshold speed plus 10. The trick here is to make little inputs frequently, get the aircraft uh, flying where you want it to fly. See the speed starting to come off slightly now, that's to be expected. I wanted to come back to threshold speed which is perfect. No pappies at uh, TARB as uh, simulated, but we can live with that. The picture looks good, just watching the glide slope. I go threshold speed 50 30, feet. 40, 30, 20, 10. And reverses. No need to break just yet, the reversals are doing all we need with reverse idle. Start applying the brakes just now. And to taxing speed, I'll store the reverses. I love it how X-Plane puts the uh, distance boards right in the middle of the taxiway. Uh, we'll not worry about that. So, looks like a good exit. We'll turn off here. And once we've got uh, the appropriate taxi instructions, we'll uh, do some business here as well. We'll store the uh, spoilers first of all, put the flaps and slats away, run the flight directors off, and most importantly, we'll start the APU. can also lose the uh, wing lights and taxiing in APUs there with the generators uh, on. Excellent, so rather than taxiing all the way in, we'll work on the basis that we can just stop on the taxiway here. Before turning on to stand, obviously we'd turn the nose light off. Uh, we come to a halt, set the parking brake, and with that we can shut the aircraft down. So verify we've got parking brake, make sure the APU is on, and it's on the bus, uh, which it is. You'll switch these two off. Once we've turned the uh, fuel selectors off, the engines will spill down. We'll turn the pumps off. Uh, probably turn the yaw damper off. And uh, yeah, spill down nicely, coming under 20%. So with that, we'll turn off the uh, anti-collision light and we'll turn off the transponder. Finally, we can let people out by releasing the seatbelt sign. Have a look. 
So there we go, an entirely conventional ILS arrival. Uh, touchdown, in the touchdown zone, maybe a touch on the firm side. The aircraft dropped the nose ever so slightly as I brought the power off, so just something to watch out for uh, as you're flying it. But otherwise, perfectly acceptable and uh, taxied off. So quite a straightforward ILS arrival and uh, using the three times table to manage the descent towards the beacon. Obviously I chose TAR because it's got a v, uh, the beacon, the, v, uh, the VOR, in a very convenient location for it, but lots of airfields, uh, certainly in X-Plane, have still got the locator outer markers, NDB beacons. Uh, if you look at places like uh, Gatwick and uh, I think Glasgow as well, they've got beacons on the uh, X-Plane nav data that perhaps aren't uh, there in real life anymore. Uh, as I said, they're being removed in real life, but uh, they're still quite useful to have in the sim. So make use of them, make notes of them uh, while you still can. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and uh, the uh, flying of the DC-9. If you don't have it, uh, I'd recommend you spend 5 or 10 minutes, download the aircraft uh, and install it. It's, it's really nice to fly. It's got uh, the basic systems, like I said, that there's just enough to to have some fun with. And most importantly, it flies really, really nicely. Thanks very much for listening to me. If you've got any comments or questions, I'd love to uh, see them in the comments section. Thanks very much, and I will speak to you again shortly.